Hi, and welcome to OpenMatch, a scalable matchmaking framework built on Google Cloud. My name is Jonathan Faust. I am a cloud developer advocate, and I'm gonna walk you through why OpenMatch is a great solution for you to help you build out your matchmaker. We'll, we'll go through the benefits of uh, OpenMatch as far as scalability, and we'll also go through the benefits of why we decided to go open source. So firstly, before we kick things off, we should talk about the traditional matchmaking architecture and why it poses a problem and why OpenMatch kind of decided to tackle this issue. So the first thing I guess we can talk about is why we wanted to create OpenMatch. And we have to first look at the traditional matchmaking architecture. So most traditional uh, matchmaking architectures tend to have a monolithic approach to matchmaking. And that involves having a single service that handles authentication, pulling player data, uh, gathering all of the information in order to submit in a, a well a well created uh, request and then sending it off to your game servers. So this kind of creates a single point of failure because if one thing goes down in your monolithic uh, matchmaker, it causes a bunch of issues going forward. So we want to take an approach where we kind of split that up into various different services and we wanted to make sure that open match then also has the ability to scale when you grow because with the monolithic approach, you have to take an account a single service that has to grow with your application. So let's take a look at uh, some of the issues that kind of have, have you have to deal with when you deal with your matchmaker. So there are various complexities when it comes to matchmaking. You have to deal with latency. You have to deal with wait time, skill level. And we know that most matchmakers operate on skill level these days. So you want to be able to connect players of similar skill levels together so that they have an enjoyable experience. Uh, so you know, we take that into account when we talk about our matchmaking process. But then once you start to kind of get, you know, a, a good footing, a good foundation, you want to kind of expand your search criteria and the kind of the things that you matchmake on. So we kind of introduce other things such as character preferences or even uh, role preferences, depending on the game that you're trying to play. We have geography and regions that we have to deal with if you want to separate your players based upon region for better latency, better performance, better make just bring people closer together. And lastly, you want to create that sociograph that allows you to kind of connect players that kind of, you know, are either friends, have played together, had a really good experience, or just they just win a lot. And we just want to connect those players together. So uh, we start to think about all of those those areas that Open Match and other matchmakers want to try to tackle. So hopefully we can help you out with that. Now let's introduce Open Match. So Open Match is an open source matchmaking framework that we co-founded with Unity for for empowering game developers to implement their own match matchmakers and serve their players. So there are various benefits for uh, you know Open Match, which includes uh, the fact that we want Open Match to kind of scale with, with with your need and your player base. So you shouldn't have to worry about configuring things when a sudden surge of players comes and your 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 development team is is sleeping for the night. So we want to we want to create something that scales as needed and you don't need to worry too much about it. Uh, and that allows you to focus more on your game development. That allows you to focus on the game logic that connects your players together for better experiences. So you wanna focus more on your logic, you wanna focus more on you know breaking players up. You may want to break players up, we, we provide that as well, but you might wanna break people up so that you can actually focus on a core group of folks that that just are gonna play well together. Open Match provides that flexibility to deal with that. And lastly, we want to allow you to maintain control. So uh, running on Kubernetes, uh, it allows you to kind of, you know, separate your players, you know, as needed. You also want to have the control of deploying your services wherever you want to go. So uh, running on Kubernetes, you can pretty much deploy just about anywhere. We deploy on GKE, but, uh, you know, being able to scale and use the benefits of Kubernetes, we kind of want you to take it just about anywhere that you want to go. So there's no lock in with us. Next, let's talk about OpenMatch. Uh, it is a modern distributed matchmaking system that allows you to scale with your game. It currently runs on GKE, which uh, is you know our own proprietary Kubernetes offering, but uh, it offers a bunch of, of, of benefits that we'll start to talk about, such as scaling. So scaling, suppose that you have 10 players and your game does really well, and then next thing you know, you're hit with 10 million players. Uh, the benefits of Kubernetes allows your your game and your your matchmaker, excuse me, to scale up with that with that surge of players on the fly, um, and that's that's one of the big things that we wanted to target is that we wanted to make scaling less of an issue for developers. 
Nextly, uh, we want to talk about flexibility. So there are some folks that need the scalability of a matchmaker, but want to integrate their own existing systems with, with, with that kind of benefit. So Open Match allows you to kind of extend it and take the core benefits of running with a scalable platform such as Open Match and you know, implement your own services, implement your own services that, that connect and integrate and, and communicate with Open Match and, uh, and allows you to kind of ex, you know, expand as much as needed, make the matchmaker your own. So we want to provide that kind of flexibility with you. And lastly, uh, you want to be able to measure uh, the latency. You want to be able to measure the performance of your matchmaker and the benefits of Kubernetes allows you to do that. Whether your player's wait time is too long, whether the latency is too high, uh, whether your 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 game logic and allows you to kind of run these kind of things to kind of implement or integrate on that match logic to make the experience a little bit more better for your players. Next, let's see open match in action before we start to walk, we start to talk about the matchmaking flow. So to kick things off for our demo, quick disclaimer: I've already taken the steps to deploy the cluster as well as the namespaces that all of our servers will be deployed to. So the first pro the first step of this demo, which is part of our traditional process of deploying your match uh, maker with Open Match, is we're going to deploy Open Match Core. So to kind of walk through some of the core services for Open Match, uh, we have the Open Match front end, which is responsible for creating a ticket and also updating the clients on the status of those tickets. Uh, we have the state store, which is going to hold all of our tickets in a key value store. Uh, it's it's also can be swapped out with any other key value store, such as memory store. Uh, we have the query service, which is responsible for looking at these tickets and based upon a match profile, profile that's given for the query, will return all of the tickets that meet that criteria. So for example, if you have a 5v5, a 1v1, a battle royale match that's based on skill, uh, it will grab all of the tickets that meet that criteria. We also have the open match backend, which is responsible for invoking the match function to generate match proposals. And it'll interact with another service that we'll deploy later that is going to assign uh, these uh, tickets within these match proposals, an assignment or a game server. Uh, and all of these services make up the core functionality of uh, a matchmaker that you would find. And we wanted to kind of create that so that you could spend more time on your logic and not worry about the core functionality of your match your matchmaker. Uh, next step is we're just gonna deploy uh, a config map that's gonna hold some environment variables as well as a default evaluator, which is responsible for looking at your match proposals, assigning them a quality score. And once we sort these match proposals based upon this quality score, we can assign the proposals that have the best quality first, thus ensuring that your players have the best experience possible. Uh, next step is we're going to, for the sake of this demo, we're going to deploy a 1v1 match function that's just going to grab the first two people that it finds in queue and pair those folks together. Uh, we're also going to deploy the director or we're going to you know, simulate a director that's responsible for asking open match for match proposals. And once it receives those proposals, assigning them to a game server. Now to kind of show that uh, a little bit a little bit more graphically, we're gonna forward all of the traffic to a browser window uh, via localhost, and we are going to see what that traffic looks like. So to kind of show you what you're looking at, we have five clients uh, that are fake players. They're gonna go through various different statuses. Um, one of them being the main menu, uh, creating a ticket, uh, waiting for a match and then sleeping to play a match. Um, you'll also notice that they have assignments. And if you look carefully, once the assignment comes up, you notice that some of them are paired together, which is the result of the 1v1 uh, match function, finding them and pairing them to together. Uh, further down, we have the director and the director also go through various different statuses. One is sleeping because the director runs on a interval that you set yourself. Uh, you can do it via the config map, for example, and it will ax open match for these match proposals and thus invoking this match function, uh, the 1v1 match function. Once it kind of gets those uh, match proposals, it goes through the process of actually creating those game servers that you see the fake players connecting to, which are not actually game servers, but they are just mock addresses that we've we've created for the sake of the demo. To kind of see that uh, that graphically, we'll go through the next couple of slides and show you the process as a, a player goes through the matchmaking flow.
So now that we saw open match kind of in action, let's talk about the flow, the matchmaking flow that your players just went through. So firstly, your 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 players are going to submit a request to to matchmake. And this kind of goes through your your custom service that you created called the game front end. The game front end is kind of your responsibility as developer to kind of create the service that not only authenticates your player, but builds a matchmake, builds a matchmaking request upon all of the player information that's necessary for these players to be matched upon. So once your game front end has built a a, a request or a ticket, it then forwards that over to open match. So once open match, the front end has accepted or uh, you know received your request, it is then stored inside of a state store. Now, we currently use Redis for that, but allow, we allow the flexibility to swap it out with any other uh, key value store that you have in place. So secondly, what happens next is there's another service that is your responsibility that kind of looks for matches or match proposals, and it's called your director. So your director's responsibility is to say, hey, I want to define the type of profiles for the game modes that your players are going to play with, such as free for all, battle royales, uh, 5v5s. And we kind of define all the criteria necessary for players to match upon. And that includes skill balance as well. So the director then says, hey, I want to find, I want to receive match proposals based upon the match criteria that I'm trying to fulfill. And we send that request over to the back end an open match. So the back end is then responsible for invoking the match function, which is responsible for running all of your logic and create these match proposals. In order to do so, the match function has to query the query service or submit a request to the query service to return all of the tickets in the state store that kind of match the, the match criteria for this particular game mode. So once the query service has returned all of the tickets to the match function from the state store, it then goes through its normal logic, builds out these, these match proposals, and sends it back to the back end, which then forwards it back to the, the director. Next, uh, we talk about the assignment phase. So now that we've kind of gathered these match proposals, we want to connect these folks to game servers to play their games. So the way that we do that is the director will then you know, communicate with a game server uh, orchestration platform such as Agones, and it returns back a, a game server for folks to play on. Once it's received that game server, it then goes and assigns the game server to this match proposal where all players, all the tickets are uh, populated within that match proposal, and it forwards it back to the back end, eventually then submitting that uh, upgrade, um, updated uh, ticket information to the state store. So each one of the tickets in the match proposals will receive this assignment. So once all of the tickets have been populated with an assignment, it then follows the process back to return a response back to the client. So via the front end and then your game front end. And once your players have received a match found uh, response and a game server assignment, the players will then be able to connect directly to the game server. Now that we've kind of talked about the benefits of open match, the match make, uh, the matchmaking flow, and we kind of walk through a demo, let's talk about why we decided to go open source. So firstly, match make, match matchmaking is a tough topic to solve, and it's hard to do it alone. So we figured collaboration was the best approach to go about this. So collaboration, of course, uh, results in better a better solution for everyone and nothing that's a fine-tuned uh, solution for just one person. So it takes a community to kind of, you know, raise a child, and that's what open match is. It allows you to kind of, you know, take the best practices when it comes to matchmaking and implement that into a, a solution that provides the core framework for a bunch of folks to use and, and run with. Secondly, we, we want to talk about flexibility. We want to allow folks to, you know, a match a matchmaker is not a single solution turnkey uh, uh, solution that we can kind of deal with. So what we want to do is we want to allow you to kind of take open match, run with it the way that you want to, extend it as much as you'd like, integrate additional services, change any of the core functionality that you want on your own, and you know run with it and make the best match making you can for your players. And lastly, uh, because we kind of brought every, everybody together in a collaborative effort to kind of build this, there's no need to actually re reinvent the wheel. We want to be able to allow you to kind of take what you need and use it as as possible. Um, use each component as uh, as necessary, and then we we allow you to kind of say, "Hey, 
I'm going to focus more on my game logic and stop worrying about the core functionality all matchmakers should typically have. And if you want to find more information, feel free to check out openmatch.dev. And lastly, I just want to thank you for uh, joining me on this journey and this talk. And if you have any questions, feel free to fire them away.